surprise you just walked in on me. It always cracked me up when Walt Disney would do it. Like you never notice people coming in with the camera and the lights. So, you can see what silly things will humor me, particularly when I'm bored. And I am bored to tears. Why am I bored to tears? It just has been raining and raining and raining and raining. <sighs> I mean, I like the rain. I was singing in the rain. Really? From where I stand, the sun is shining all over the place. But, come again some other day. So here's my issue. I had a lot of clips that I did. You notice the flurry of videos go out and I had some nice moments. I went out and grabbed clips here and there and you know I was out doing things. Of course I got caught in the rain a few times so you saw some of that. But I had enough video clips to do four or five videos. Well they're done and it's been raining pretty steady and not just a little bit and it's been really overcast. Uh, for a while now since I ran out of clips, so I don't have any more clips and if I go out It's just gonna be soggy dark Kind of blah And I'm not really into that. I thought about walking down to the river just to say look the river's higher But that's really not very exciting or informative So you're stuck with another talking head video. Yeah, that's here So I'm gonna take this opportunity to cover a few things. Now I was asked, why don't you like Bogota? Well, I don't like Bogota because it's huge. It's the same reason I don't really like Quito. I, it's not just huge, but the larger a city gets, the more opportunity and the more of a breeding ground there is for crime. And I'm not a big fan of crime and you come to a smaller city of five to six hundred thousand people in Cuenca or in Armenia that's three hundred thousand people. I like those are okay. Cuenca's bordering on the big but the way it's laid out you don't notice it that much. It's really almost like a whole bunch of communities st stuck together. But in Bogota you have the good, the bad, and the ugly and it's um, a lot of crime and even if you stay in at night and just go out in the day like you can do in a smaller city um, it's still a problem it, like in Quito you know like my friend Sandy who had her cell phone stolen here I mentioned in there or when I interviewed her she mentioned that she had had her cell phone stolen six times in Quito over a span of time and they were all during the day and in Cuenca, that's really unusual. And if you remember, the people that stole hers were actually from Quito and they just come in here to, you know, to fleece the sheep and run back. So Bogota is no different. It's, it, it's got a lot of issues there. It's got a huge poor population. Uh, they flock there because, you know, they're looking for jobs and, um, Maybe they flock for the climate. I mean, that's possible. It's, it's colder than here, maybe colder than Quito. There's nice parts of Bogota, just like every city. I mean, even Detroit has some nice areas. And I don't want to just flatly condemn Bogota, but it, for me, it doesn't have anything going for it. It's just way too crowded. There's way too many problems there. It's it's really expensive. It's one of the most expensive cities in South America and one of the more expensive cities in the world. And um, 
And, you know, it's a side effect of the fact that Columbia has a boom economy. It's a place to be. It's very business friendly and things are springing up everywhere. There's a lot of entrepreneurs flocking in from Europe, from Australia to to make their fortune because you can do that in Colombia. But in Bogota, it's, it, it's all the remnants of the problems of that. And so just not a fan. I guess you could just say it's just too big for me. The same reason I will never want to live in Quito or even Guayaquil. So uh, Cuenca is about as big as I ever want to be in. And it's big, but uh, you know, I, I work with it because it is a unique city and it's it's doable. I was criticized in my video for pointing out some broken sidewalks and holes in the ground saying you really need to be careful. And I was criticized because but everyone says it's a walking city. Well, yeah, it's a walking city because the way it, the way it is you kind of need to walk. Uh I won't go into buses. I mean, they're good if you like them. Uh, taxis are certainly doable, but a lot of things you want to do, you want to walk there. And, and it's very possible, especially in certain parts of Cuenca. Now, a few years back in uh, El Centro, downtown Cuenca, the old town, a lot of new sidewalks were put in and widened and it's it's much better to walk there but a lot of places in Cuenca is not like that and you really have to be careful you I've twisted my ankle a couple times uh, when I first got here my first year I was here um, you get used to it after a while no different than if you're a mountain climber and you're walking and you have to negotiate all these rocks and gravel and you know you get used to that um, but you do have to get used to it and it can be hazardous but i would just to the people that want to criticize me and say no it's perfectly uh, wonderful for walking and there are no issues a recent news item and it's rather sad rather tragic a man over in gringolandia on ordinez lasso that's where most of the, the gringos want to gravitate to it's like a kind of like Chinatown is in New York City. We'll call it America Town there. He was 90 some years old. The details in this in this situation don't matter so much, but he was an older gentleman from all reports. He was in good health and, you know, pretty fit, but he's still he's over 90 years old and he's trying to navigate across this two uh, uh, four lane with a median road and he slipped, lost his balance, fell into the road, and was hit by a car and expired. And it's, it's certainly sad. But if you know that road, you'll know that, you know, crosswalks or a way to get from one side to the other can be very difficult. It could be a long way before. The, so what do people do? They just you know, they watch the traffic and they kind of play Frogger and they... And there's places all over like that. I live on Isabel Catalica or a block from it. And it's exactly like that. You know, there is no official place to cross within probably half a mile or so. You, you kind of have to navigate your way across in order to get over to the park. To all the people that want to take offense at everything I say, um, yeah, I like to say pound salt, but that would be kind of rude, but it, it, go ahead and take offense. It, it really doesn't bother me. The truth is the truth. And anybody here that wants to have their eyes open knows that it doesn't make Cuenca a bad place. I'm not insulting Cuenca. I'm giving people coming here a heads up that it's not the picture that a lot of people want to paint, that it's just perfect, you can walk everywhere. Well, you can walk everywhere. You can walk everywhere, anywhere that you are. But you may have to navigate obstacles. And you have certainly obstacles here, and you have to keep in mind your safety. It wasn't so long ago that right near Millennium Plaza, which is a very populated, busy area with lots of restaurants and businesses, that somebody was waiting uh, to cross the street 
at a street light and it was a windy day and there was a bunch of wires hanging there and a couple were bare on the end the wind blew hit the person zapped them and knocked them into the traffic they weren't hurt beyond being shocked but i mean you wouldn't experience that in a lot of places so you you have to be careful you never know what's going to jump up and bite you so why do people come to cuenca I, these broad questions kind of kill me but i figured i'd try to tackle it anyway the majority of people that come here it could it could be 60 it could be 70 percent i just know that it's majority of people that come here are looking for a place to ret retire and are primarily looking for a place that they perceive as being very inexpensive uh, um, and that's what thing I try to warn you about in these videos if that's what you're looking for and that's what you need to have for your life this is really not the place for you it's not all that inexpensive and again, I've covered this in many videos, all things are relative. So if you are from San Francisco, then it's inexpensive. But if you're talking about having retirement pay and the average retirement pay from Social Security, I believe is around $1,400 or $1,200, somewhere in that range, you can live here, but it's going to be really tight. It's, it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world. And your first year here, as you're learning, will be all the more difficult because you're not going to know how to do things inexpensively. And you have to learn that. It takes a little bit of time. So um, that's why most people come here. Now you have some that come here um, just to travel and they stay here. You have some that come here because they want to be in the art scene and so they plan a period of time. You have some that come here because they've got a job uh, teaching at the university, something along those lines. So there's a multitude of reasons that people are going to come here and I'm referring primarily uh, to people from the United States or Canada. Uh, but the most part it's for retirement and most of the people it, it, it appears to be for that reason. Um, hence the videos and the constant reminder to be careful about the wrong idea about uh, cost of living here. If you're looking for cost of living because you're only a thousand to twelve hundred dollars or maybe even less, it, there are other places that can suit you but this really wouldn't be one of them unless you want to have a subsistence living. Last thing is work update. Uh, things have been going real well. Um, fingers crossed. I've got a couple people that have promised to bring in some things over the next three weeks from the U.S. Uh, the clothing and shoes and uh, some electronics, cell phone, uh, to take care of the people that I've been talking about on this video. Uh, all but one now are gainfully employed. One's part-time. And one person is not gainfully employed, but uh, she's waiting for an answer. She's the doctor. Um, she may have a job teaching anatomy at a local university. And um, I would think that she would be a shoe in for that, but she won't hear f about that for another week or so. So things are going pretty good. And uh, there are other people that came that had a lot of need, but I had to put them aside because I can only do so much. So I'm going to uh, bring in a few of those people and, and see if we can get them uh, in a good situation also. So I want to thank everybody that's helped, um, even the people that offered but for whatever reason couldn't come through. I thank you for at least reaching out and, and considering it. Um, it's greatly appreciated. <clears throat> you don't get to see the side that I get to see, the tears of joy when something happens, uh, when they receive pay, when they don't have to beg for food. It's, it's, um, I'm reaping the reward of seeing that and you're just kind of donating off to something anonymously, but, uh, don't misunderstand. It's greatly appreciated. And I thank you. Uh, I hate to say this, but it, it's it's taking its toll on me it's emotionally it's kind of draining and uh, I'm not Mother Teresa I don't know how much longer I'm going to continue this so 
I just want to say this. If there's anyone out there that lives here in Cuenca that is, an, is interested in getting involved in this, I can walk you through my experience. You know, we can meet up and walk you through my experience, how you're best able to help. And primarily that's by listening to what they actually need. Um, and feel free. This is not something that, you know, I have no corner on this. Every person watching this video can do something. And every person living in Cuenca can do exactly what I'm doing and more. Um, and the need is there, so feel free. And with that, I will see you later.